Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, Finch helped decorate for his big day with Griffin over at the Sacred Temple. We still haven't given Griffin his shiny trinket yet, but I'm sure that this is just around the corner now, so Finch wants to make sure that everything is going to be perfect for the big day. The only decoration we're missing are the rare red rubies of the mole mines, so we're hoping that we can go find those today. And in fact, since Finch has actually maxed out his swimming skill, we're going to do that in a bit of a different way. So Starling has told us plenty of rumors about this strange place right off the shore. Apparently there's a secret mole mine somewhere down here. I'm not a hundred percent sure which tile it is. I'm going to assume probably somewhere in the middle, so we're just going to have to use her best judgment, I guess, Finch. One of those tiles will take us to the legendary secret place. I'm hoping that the rubies will be a bit easier to find there, too. Griffin has been hoping to get his paws on one of those precious rubies for a very long time now, but they are a little bit difficult for us to dig up. And in fact, the one thing I know for sure is that we are going to need to bring tons and tons of food with us. We could probably spare the catnip and the lavender. I don't think we'll have to worry about those today, but maybe we should bring some of our licorice roots. Maybe we could even use these to snack on when we go down to the beaches. I mean, not only is it going to take us a long time to get to the rubies, but it's going to take us a pretty long time just to get to the beach too. So go ahead and drop off your catnip. All of our cats are already gone as well. It is the day of the summer festival. I'm kind of surprised to see Coco outside our den though. Pretty sure you should be at the festival too, buddy. I think that may have started already. We're not going to go with you this time. I wonder if Coco's just waiting here because he wants to see if Finch is going to come too. We have different things to take care of though. Oh, look at how many bunnies we have in our inventory. Yeah, we have to leave the frogs behind, so I guess Finch is going to be munching on bunnies all day long today. Let's go ahead and eat up some of these licorice roots to get our hunger up to 100. That way we should be ready to start the journey. Oh, and you know, I almost forgot. I wanted to see if maybe we could change around our active skills. I wonder if we could put our sprinting skill in here instead. Maybe in place of our lion's roar. I can't quite remember if the lion's roar even affects the bats, but I feel like the sprinting skill would be more useful for us because it would get us down there faster. So let's see if we can unequip this just for now. We'll put it back into his battle skills when he's ready to go for fights. But today it's all about mining. So we have deep cuts for the bats. We have our summon allies skill too. I don't think our cats truly attack the bats, but they do act as a pretty good distraction. So as we get lower and lower into the mines, that might be a good thing for us to consider. Now we should be all full now. We have tons of food in our pockets, we have some herbs, and the valerian. Let's use this as well, and then doubled with our sprinting skill. We should be able to get down there in no time. Oh my gosh, Finch. Okay, that's a little bit faster than I expected. Oh, Ruby, I'm surprised you can keep up at all. I mean, she has enough trouble keeping up with us when we're using our valerian, let alone our sprinting skill on top of it. Well, you are going to be scaring away all the prey today, but honestly, Finch, you don't really have time to catch them anyways. You're even going to have to bypass your frogs if you happen to see them hopping around. So we want to make sure that we don't accidentally go straight into the festival either. No need for us to trigger that and end up wasting the whole day. Let's sprint all the way down to the Swamplands then. That should be the easiest way for us to ensure that we're not accidentally going to stumble inside. Straight past the Prairie Mines, one of Finch's favorite places to do his work for the moles. And I guess if the secret cave ends up being a little bit too difficult for Finch to conquer, we could always come back here and pick up where we left off. The Prairie Mines even has a little warp for us to use now. It's not as low as we've gotten in the past, but it's still definitely an improvement from starting right at the top floor. Alright Finch, you should be just around the bend from the beaches now. I'm going to assume that maybe the beach central is the one that we have to go to. I figure it must be somewhere in the middle, so either that or the river mouth. It sure is a good thing that the forest colony still has such a high reputation with us though. The last thing Finch needs is to fight his way through the forest colony too. 
Oh, and the berries. Oh, that would be the perfect snack. You know, Finch, why don't you go ahead and munch on this winter blueberry that you have in your inventory? Then you can go ahead and fill it up with the raspberries instead. We might even go ahead and drop off this golden seal right next to the base of the tree. I feel like the berries are going to be so much more beneficial. Not only do we lose quite a bit of hunger because we're in hard mode right now, but every single swipe we take at those rocks is going to cost us some of our hunger. To be honest, we probably need a bigger inventory before we can truly conquer these mines in one day. But Finch is still going to try his best, and look at how well he can swim now. It's like it's nothing. I don't think the bar is even popping up. Oh my gosh! We don't have a swimming bar anymore! I didn't even notice that before. Oh my goodness, Finch. So I guess we don't have to worry about, like, using our sprinting skill to get to the bottom of this tile. Finch is beyond worrying about drowning. I was a little bit worried, too, since Slate isn't going to be around to coach us if we need it. But you certainly don't need her help anymore now, do you, Finch? So let's see, is this going to be the right place? Oh, it looks like it might be. Is it that, the mole cave? Our mole cache is on the screen again, so I think it might be. I suppose we could use our sprint skill just to get past these tougher currents. It seemed like Finch was having a little bit of trouble there. Oh my gosh, are you the mole? Mole? Look at this guy. Does he have a little mohawk? Excuse me, could you like chill for a second? I saw you swimming out here a moment ago. Quite a workout. How's the mole get out here? Good question. Ask my brothers. They thought I was weird. Didn't like my haircut or something. Banished me out here. It's like, whatever though. I don't really care. Oh my gosh. I could see Starling loving this mole. I wonder if he dyed his fur just like our cats do. But hey, since you're out here and all, you're probably wanting to go into the mines beneath the island, right? They're like, filled with pirate treasure. Story goes that a ship wrecked on this little island a long time ago. They say the ghosts of the crew still haunt the caverns below. Ooh, I remember Penny fighting ghosts in the graveyard once. So that's going to be interesting. I wonder if it's the same. I don't believe all that stuff, but it's whatever. Maybe you do. That's chill with me. Hey, if you bring me some of that pirate treasure, I guess I could give you mole cash or something. I might even trade some stuff with you if you get enough mole cash. Oh, so is the pirate treasure the same as the precious gems? Or is this going to be a completely different sort of treasure entirely? That's interesting. I guess we'll find out. If you end up heading down there, you can mine by swiping with your claws at the big rocks. Yeah, yeah, Mole, we've done this before. You could say that Finch is something of an expert at mining by now. You're definitely going to want to bring some snacks with you if you go down there. Or don't, I'm not your boss, it's whatever. Well, he seems like a pretty chill individual, doesn't he? He doesn't really care what we do from here on out. But we have plenty of food in our pockets still, so I think we're going to be okay. Oh my gosh, how adorable is this? There's a little pirate flag right by the door. So this is actually some sort of like pirate cavern. Oh yeah, look at all these little, like, treasure specks inside the rocks. 24 floors left until the next rest stop. Oh, is that new? Usually they don't tell us that. That's interesting. All right, Finch. It looks like there are quite a few bats up here. I don't see any of those ghosts that he was talking about. But there are lots and lots of enemies for you to try to evade. It looks like we're actually finding gold ore and iron ore quite a bit earlier, too. So maybe our hopes of finding the rubies aren't so far off after all. Yes, even the topaz! Oh, excellent, and this is only floor one? Well, let's go ahead and scoot down to the next floor then, Finch. Yeah, I guess it actually counts down how many floors we have left until the next rest stop. So that's a pretty nice addition. At least we'll know when we're getting closer to being able to take a breather. The only problem is there are so many rocks around here. Way, way more than Finch is used to dealing with. So we're going to have to get really lucky with these staircases. During the last live stream the developers put together, they actually gave a little tip about mining. Supposedly these rocks that are right next to a body of water won't have the stairs. 
I guess it has something to do with the way that they generated back when they started making these mines. So if a rock is touching some sort of water source, we don't have to worry about cracking it open. I feel like that would probably be a little bit more useful in the previous mines where there weren't quite this many rocks. And I think you might have to get rid of this bat too. This guy is being very persistent and they do hit pretty hard. Maybe we should have brought a few more of those herbs after all. But as you could see, we already had to eat two of those mice, and we're only on floor two. So Finch, you're gonna have to start moving a little bit faster, buddy. At least all of this extra mole cash is going to be great for buying some more of those warps in our previous caverns. I think Griffin is going to be pretty surprised. Hopefully pleasantly surprised, though. I wonder if he was hoping to spend a little bit of time with Finch at the festival this season. I'm sure the fall festival is probably his favorite, so we'll have to make sure that we head to that one for sure. In fact, we could even purchase a few more of those glow potions since Griffin seems to love them so much. We should probably consider actually using one of those glow potions before we propose to him with the shiny trinket. I'm sure that would make his day, and it would definitely make the whole thing very, very memorable. We still have a long, long way to go before the next break in this cavern, but I hope there's going to be some way for us to buy some prey. Usually when we get to those break floors, one of the moles is waiting for us, one of the mole workers with some items in their shop. Usually they have food for us to buy in case we've already run out, but they also do tend to carry special gems. And where on earth is the last rock? Oh my gosh, is there a rock behind this rock? No way. That's where the staircase was? Oh, Finch. These moles are very, very tricky. Or I guess we should say Mole is very, very tricky, hiding his staircases behind the pillars. Jeez, you're going to have to keep your eyes open then, little guy. Wasn't there some kind of skill that we could use to crack open all of the rocks around us? I vaguely remember Penny using that quite a bit in her time. I think it was Penny anyways. I suppose it always could have been Finch. But I want to say it was like the mighty swipe or something along those lines. Not only does it do more damage on our enemies, but if we take it into the mines, it cracks open every single stone in our path. It was relatively useful in the other mine shafts, the prairie and the forest but I feel like it would be even more useful here. There are just so many rocks for us to check. So next time we come down here, we are definitely going to make sure that we have that in our arsenal. Ah, uh, yes. The harvest mice are in these rocks too. Oh, thank goodness. Not that we're running super, super low on food right now, but still, that is a very good thing to see. We still have roughly three more rows worth of food inside our inventory. So Finch, you are doing excellent so far. Gosh, we are just not getting very lucky with these staircases, though. I wonder if it's just an unlucky day for Finch. Kind of like Stardew Valley in that way, how it's always harder to find staircases when you're having an unlucky day. So now we're down to floor six. Still 19 floors left until we have our very first rest stop. That's got to be where the warps come from, too. I did see those little dirt clusters right outside the entrance to the caves. We still haven't seen any sign of those strange ghosts that he was talking about, though. Not a single sign of the ghostly pirate crew that landed here so long ago. I guess that's because there aren't quite as many treasures for us to find down here. I'll bet once the gemstones become a little bit more common, that's when the pirates are going to come out to protect their treasure. I guess it's probably a good thing that Starling never made it this far, but I could see him absolutely loving Mole. Like, we seriously have to come up with some way for those two to cross paths because they would absolutely love each other. Starling could help dye his fur. Ooh, and there's another little mouse. Well, don't mind if I do, we are getting awfully hungry again. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use one of our marigolds as well. We still do have quite a bit of health on us, but just to be safe, because these bats hit very, very hard. Ooh! Ooh, is that one of the ghosts? Yes, they do look like the ghosts that we saw in the graveyard. Oh my gosh, and they move so fast too. We might actually have to take him out because I think he's going to be able to catch up to us. Oh my gosh, Finch, good thing you took one of those marigolds. 
Let's have you eat one of the bunnies so you're going to be feeling nice and strong too. And please don't catch yourself right up against all of the rocks. We're going to use our deep cut skill as soon as it gets close enough. Yes. Oh, and it looks like that actually took care of all of the rocks too. Oh, I didn't know we could do that. Excellent. Yeah, I thought it was a different attack that took out the rocks. I guess we're going to have to try out more of our active skills here. They might do some special things. Well, let's go ahead and try to knock down some more of these rocks while we're running away from this ghost. And every single time he gets close enough, we'll just turn around and take a swipe. He kind of seems scared of us, though. Okay, he can still hit us too. I wasn't quite sure. It seems like every time we take a swipe, he runs a little bit further away. He sure does have a lot of health though. I wonder if we can even take him down. Oh, thank goodness. Down to the next floor. Leaving the ghostly crew behind us. Hopefully there aren't any more lurking around these parts. And for that matter, hopefully he's not going to alert the rest of his ghostly crew that they have some invaders in their midst. I guess we'll have to let Mole know that he was right. There are indeed some spirits haunting these caverns. And they're not exactly friendly enough for visitors. To be honest, I'm surprised that Mole hasn't come down here himself. I wonder if he's the mole that we're going to see once we get down to that resting floor, or if somebody else is going to be working in here instead. Somebody else that the other mole brothers may have banished, in fact. Oh no, not another ghost. Oh, and it's already spotted you, Finch. Well, go ahead and swipe down all of these rocks for us. Oh, that is excellent. The only thing is, I feel like we should probably use it toward the enemies if we're going to use it at all. It feels like such a waste to not take down some of their health. We are doing a pretty good job dodging this ghost. But they are so fast. I mean, I guess we could sprint away. Maybe then it would lose interest or get stuck on the rock, so that's a pretty good strategy too. Maybe we should even call in our summon allies skill for this one. Oh, and they're actually doing damage this time. I think so anyways. Oh, that might actually be the ghost. Oh, Finch, I thought maybe they fixed that glitch, but it looks like our guards are still being torn apart by the enemies here. That's kind of a bummer. At least they were able to distract the ghost enough that you could grab that little mouse, so that filled you up a bit too. But these staircases are the hardest ones to find yet. Oh, in no way. It was right next to the one that we found the mouse in. Well, it looks like the rocks are changing now. So I wonder if we're going to find... Ooh. A different kind of gemstone? Oh, no. It's just a topaz inside that one. Well, I feel like we should probably pick that one up because that was pretty special. This is our very first piece of genuine pirate treasure. Maybe we'll have to drop this off in Starling's paws. He's probably the one who would appreciate the most, and it would prove that we've actually been to those caverns that he told us about so long ago. The ones that he's only heard rumors of. Let's go ahead and munch on another one of these bunnies. Now we're down to about two rows worth of food. But we're at mine level 11, so I want to at least get down to the resting point if we can. We'll have to make sure we check and see what Mole is actually selling inside his shop too. It sounds like he's going to have some different things. Things that his brothers have probably never seen before. It's kind of sad that they sent him off like that though. Just because he has a different way of thinking? Or I guess really a different way of looking? Dyeing your fur is pretty common in the cat world, but I guess not so much with the moles. It's actually kind of ironic if you think about it. The moles do tend to sell quite a few different fur dyes for us cats, so you would think that they would want to use it on themselves every now and then too. A little self-expression even when you're hard at work deep down in these mine shafts. It's already after 9pm, so I know that the festival has definitely ended by now. That means that all of our cats should be wrapped up inside their dens again. Griffin is probably wondering where on earth Finch has run off to. Not a single frog today for the two of them to share. But I'm sure that Finch has probably clued quite a few of the other cats in on this little endeavor of his. Maybe he's even asked for Coco to keep him distracted with all of those festival games and whatnot. We do know that Griffin appreciates a good competition. I wonder if he's even managed to win anything for Finch. Maybe he's stashing away his tokens to use as a gift for our Highland King. I wonder what Griffin would decide to purchase there. Aside from the potions, of course. 
He did once say that he was hoping to change his own style at some point, so maybe he would actually buy one of those fur dyes and use it to change up his fur color. Oh my gosh, and with all the rocks on this level? I feel like I'm playing Pac-Man or something. It feels like an actual maze and this ghost is chasing me. All right, Finch. Maybe it's time for you to use your deep cut skill again. We'll just have to line this up perfectly so we can take down some of the rocks and also hit all of those enemies. Maybe right about here would be a good spot? No staircase, unfortunately, but we did at least hit the ghost and we also uncovered a few of those topaz gems. I don't think we need to worry about taking too many of them. They would be nice to sell off for the mole cash, but honestly, I want to go for the bigger gems. We know that the rarer ones give us plenty more mole cash than those tiny topazes. Oh no, there's two ghosts on this floor? Oh, great, Finch. We're only on floor 18 too and it's already getting harder. Well, let's leave these two behind us. We're not going to mess with them, but next time, if we see that many ghosts again, it's probably going to be time for you to call in your allies. We definitely have a one up there, chasing after us again, I'm afraid. Let's use our deep cut skill over here. Maybe we can take care of all of these rocks at once. Oh, they hit the ones behind him for some reason. Oh, I thought he was going to break all the ones right in front of him. Okay, this place is definitely giving you a run for your money. That must mean that there are so many treasures for us to find when we get lower, though. There's no reward without great risk. We're down to just our licorice roots and our berries, and our final few herbs, too. Let's go ahead and use one of those golden seals, and we'll save the marigold for later. You know, Finch never did worry about the healing abilities. I know there are a few that he can use to heal himself while he's in battle, but to be honest, I never found Finch to be one of the healing types. He seems more like the type to rely on strength, while some of his other siblings might take interest in the art of healing. So despite his struggles with the caves, I can't really see him going home to learn any healing skills anytime soon. Oh, Finch, it's gotta be in one of these, right? There you go, buddy. Descend down to floor 21. So now we have some little blue rocks. I wonder if that means we're going to find some sapphires inside these. We'll definitely have to scoop some up if we do find them, because that would be a great thing for us to bring to Mole. I'm sure he would appreciate some super special gemstones. That one over there is shining too. Every now and then you can see a flicker. I think that means that there is a gemstone inside, but wouldn't you know it, that's not even one that we can access. Ah, there we go. There's one of the sapphires. Nice. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we didn't find a single gemstone until we had gotten down to about floor 20 or so in the previous mines. So it might be a harder place to roam, but if we are going to spend time mining, we might as well do it here. I wonder if Mole is going to have a warp system straight to the secret cave. We're definitely going to have to check that out when we leave this place. Even if it's just a warp to the beach itself, it sure would be a lot better than traveling all the way through the entire forest to get here. One more floor to go. We are officially on a level 24. And of course, there are plenty of ghosts here too, but it looks like all of our skills are at the ready again. I think we should probably scoop up this topaz as well. If we're going to end up turning back soon, we might as well fill our pockets with every last one of those sparkly gemstones. Ooh, the water is actually a pretty good way for us to escape from the ghost too. And I see that we have another treasure chest over there, but we're going to have to lose the ghost first. So go ahead and grab a few more of these licorice roots to invigorate you, Finch. And then we'll scoot your way up here. Now that ghost is just far, far too fast. We might actually have to distract it with our summon ally skill. Let's have Storm and Fuzzy do their best. This bat is not convinced though. Well, at least we managed to find an emerald from that little treasure chest that's much, much better than the topaz from before. But if only it was a ruby. I wonder if it's random every single time. Like, do you think we could actually get diamonds from those chests too? Even before we get to those super low levels. That would definitely be a pirate treasure worth guarding. Now come on, Finch, just one more floor, one more staircase, okay? Let's find a good place to line up your deep cuts ability again. Maybe up here? Yeah, there are quite a few rocks right over here. 
Ooh, but it looks like the ghost may have lost interest. Well, wait a second. You might as well crack these open with your own claws then. If we can do some work while the ghost isn't paying attention, that would be perfect. Yes! All right, so let's see what the break areas are going to look like in this cavern. Oh, it looks like exactly the same break area that we had before. And this is one of the worker moles too. So even Mole has a few moles on his side. Oh, you surprised to see me down here, eh? I'm looking for buried pirate treasure. That's right, you're looking at a soon-to-be rich mole. Huh, in the meantime, I am still accepting your muse in exchange for a quick bite. What do you say? Well, what do you have for sale, little guy? That's a spirit, eh? Take a look around at these fine wares. So 20 muse for a mouse. Oh, that is seriously going to scrape into our muse stash, especially because we're saving up for the nursery next. Yeah, since we're probably going to turn back for home anyways, I think we'll probably skip out on this. Oh, and look how expensive those rubies are. No wonder they're so hard to find. 750 muse for a ruby, and then a thousand muse for a diamond. Yeah, I think that might be a little bit out of our price range, but I wonder if he's going to have any extra advice? I did notice that he had this option too. Advice is a good thing to seek in such a hostile place. I haven't explored much of this cave myself, but I do know a thing or two about it. There's bats all over the place in the deeper levels. What's more, I've seen ghosts with me own eyes. So have we, Mr. Mole Miner. They're fast and they don't go down easy, so take caution. Maybe even pick up a healing herb or two from my shop, eh? Oh, one last thing. Now that you've made it this far, you should be able to purchase Mole Hole Fast Travel back to level 25 from Mole up by the mine's entrance with your mole cash. Might help to save you some time. From what I remember, those were actually pretty expensive too. So I wonder if maybe we should sneak down just to one more level, see if maybe we can find some little gemstones right outside the entrance. Just one or two more couldn't hurt. I guess we really should have been stuffing our pockets with the gems while we were coming down here, but I didn't want to lose out on any potential food. Any more shiny rocks, Finch? It looks like most of these don't have very much in them at all. Maybe the next level will be better? I didn't intend to do very much more exploring, and if we start getting hit by those bats, then we are going to have to turn back for home. You know, why don't we go ahead and scoop up some of these rock debris pebbles too? We know that it makes a good gift for a certain cat in the mountain colony, and it might even make for some good decorations back home. Alrighty, Finch, I think it might be time for you to return back home. Let's ascend the stairs, and let's go talk to Mole before we warp back to the den. I want to see what you have inside your shop, because I forgot to ask you before we went inside. So do you have anything different from your brother's? Ooh, we can get 101 from all the things we have right now. We'll have to put aside some things that we plan to give to our cats, but then we'll be back for some more trading with you. So Mole has turtle meat, golden seals, inventory expansions that are worth 900 mole cash. The island warp isn't actually that bad. We could probably purchase that right off the bat. And he does have a warp straight to the island itself, but that's 500 mole cash for that. Ooh, some special colors. Frost, Frost Tabby, and Seafoam Green. Oh my goodness, how pretty does that one look? That is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It is, again, quite expensive, but that would be pretty cool to bring back to Starling. I think he would appreciate that. The red cap, that almost looks like a little Santa cap. Ooh, and a bow and a pet ghost. We can actually take home a member of the ghostly pirate crew. Can you imagine? I wonder if it's going to be just as big as the ghost inside the mines, or if it's going to be like a tiny little mini ghost. Oh my gosh, that has to be a goal. We would scare so many cats with a ghost following us. Well, we've got our special treasures stashed away now, so let's go ahead and sell off all of the extra things for our mole cash. 89 mole cash for everything else, not bad. Now we have over 200 at least. Oh my gosh, no! Oh, I thought we could pick up that little shell. But it looks like the fall breeze has swept it away. Oh my gosh, that was terrible timing, Finch. Well, go ahead and eat your raspberry. Jeez. Do you think maybe we could go up to the beaches just to look for a couple of little shells? 
I mean, I want him to go back straight home, but since it's already the first day of fall anyways, let's see if he can find some shells to bring back. We don't often come down here by the beaches, so we usually don't have very many shells to share. I guess they're a bit more scarce in the fall season. There's only a few here on the shore. There's some valerian, which I know we could definitely use. But that seems to be about the extent of all of our shell collecting. And the dragonfly is... Out already, little guy? It seems a little bit early for you. It is definitely a good sign, though. I love the fall time season, especially in cattails, and it means for Finch that it'll be time for him to head on down to the swamps next and find some of those snake lilies for Griffin. So in the next episode, I think off camera, I'll probably do a little bit more mining. I'll see if I can find those red rubies after all inside one of the mines that we've already been to. It sure was tough in those pirate caves, but we found tons of treasure, so I think Finch is pretty eager to give it another go. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!